I, when I was younger, I, I used to make YouTube videos when mm -hmm. I was like 13 and they were horrible. And she'd be like, what are you doing? Like, you can't be on the internet at yeah, it's just uploading. Like, like, you can't be on video at all. Before Doja Cat would clock in over 2.6 million subscribers on YouTube, over 800,000 followers on Twitter, and more than 4.5 million followers on Instagram at the time of this recording. Before Doja Cat routinely started showing up on Instagram Live for hours at a time, often lit. But I liked... She like, hated the song. The way that you like, like, ah, you're like, the way you move. I'm sorry that I'm f***ing in the ass. It's okay. But just the I like way. It. You can do it anyway. The way. <laughs> Before Doja Cat began receiving death threats for jokes she made about Cardi B. But, like, can we just all agree that that's what she sounds like on this? Not that this song isn't fire. This song is so fuego. But, like, ding dong! Your girl! It's your girl, Cardi B! Doja Cat has been a big presence in the hip hop community ever since she began dropping songs like Moo, Juicy, and Rico Nasty. There were songs they absolutely slay on YouTube, racking up millions upon millions of views whenever she drops a new one. That's with her trademark brand of goofy humor. It took a lot of hard work for Doja to get to the spot that she's at now, and even though there have been a ton of people that are always trying to knock her off her perch, well, she executes complete control over her music and her image, and it's this level of authenticity that always manages to push the naysayers away to where they belong. I'm talking the... Back, okay, okay. back, back. You know, back, sometimes, back, back. you know... But how did this kid that bounced around from Tarzana to New York to an ashroom to LA find her calling in the music biz? Well, that's what we're here today to find out. What's going on, guys? It's your boy, Michael McCrudden, back at it again with an updated before their famous video. Now you guys, you seem to enjoy the updates. You gotta let us know who's next in the comments down below. How about Megan the Stallion or Sweetie? I'm starting to wonder if I need to make aware they now on City Girls. You guys gotta let me know who in the comments down below. And uh, yeah, let's start uh, sifting through the kitty litter to uncover the story of Doja Cat. <clears throat> For real? For real guys, that's the best we could come up with, kitty litter? Damn, I'm gonna need to fire another writer. Let's just get into the video. All right, I'm kidding. There's no one here but me. But I can't fire myself, so someone's got to take the blame. Hey, be sure to subscribe and hit that bell. Boom! Doja Cat was born Amala Zandil Delami on October 21st, 1995 in Tarzana, California. Now, before we go any further, let's just dig into that first name and find out the meaning behind it. Yeah, so in Spanish, it means love her. People have told me that. Uh, it means bird, song, and pure in Arabic. It's beautiful. And I didn't know that till I was like 16 or something. My mom lied and said it, uh, it meant immaculate jewel without flaw. <laughs> I'm like, I like that. Mom, stop. stop. Like, in my whole life, I was like, mom, stop. So when Whether her mom lied to her or not, well, that's a strong name, but maybe not as marketable as something like Doja Cat, which we'll explore the origins of in just a minute. Now, soon after being born with Doja, she almost immediately moved to the Bronx in New York with her family. Her father, Dumasami Delami, was born in Durban, South Africa, and he's an actor, dancer, composer, and even a successful film producer. He's produced South African films, including Drum and Homecoming. Her mother, Deborah Delami, is Jewish American and a visual designer for clothing brands. Now, she also spent time pursuing her own artistic designs as a painter. Now, with heritage like that, I think it's pretty safe to say that Doja, well, she comes from an artistically inclined bloodline. So her ending up as the uber-talented musician that she is today, well, it probably shouldn't come as a surprise to anyone. Growing up Doja, she spent a lot of time taking dance classes, but her true passion was singing, a secret she tried keeping to herself by only ever singing in her room when she was alone. Now at the time, her musical influences, they range from Jamiroquois to the Fugees, and we're talking about D'Angelo, remember him? Also Erica Badu and Pharrell. When she was nine years old, her mom bought her an Amy Winehouse CD, and that had a huge impact on her. She then started exploring music all on her own, and she discovered acts like Lil Kim, TLC, Party Next Door, and Drizzy Drake. Outside of music, she was always watching something with a goofy sense of humor, whether it was classics like Disney cartoons, Sesame Street, or even Jim Carrey movies like The Mask. Okay. I think it's pretty safe to say that even if she didn't realize it at the time, well, Doja subconsciously was absorbing all of these great influences and mixing with the wild and crazy humor that she loved from film, which probably came and played a big part in defining the music that she would make later on in life. But it all makes sense. Woo, I kind of just blacked out. Meow, mother. 
Now, after spending years in New York City, Doja and her family, they returned to California and back on the West Coast. Well, her family, they moved to an ashram. Now, if you don't know what that is, it's like a spiritual temple. Now there, Doja, she found it to be, well, a difficult lifestyle. In fact, she told Billboard, I just go to the temple all the time and I'd wear this scarf on my head and it was very cult-like. I felt really trapped. When we moved to the suburbs, that's when it felt like a free-for-all. I was skating every day, staying out, sneaking out, and it was just a crazy time. We moved from the suburbs to LA and I picked up break dancing when I was 10. Doja's early years in dance, they were spent in ballet and jazz classes, but once in LA, she started working more on her hip hop and pop locking skills. But like, you're nice, like if I throw it to you, if I'm like, Ugh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Now in LA, she attended school at, well, I'll let her tell the story. I had like a, I went to performing arts and I went to this, uh, it's called Central High School Number no. 9. Mm. But I think they changed it Sounds to like Ramon, Ramon Cortinez. And it's a crazy looking school. Looks like there's a, like a water slide. Damn. Oh, but that's But when fun. you fly overhead, it makes a nine. It's like a giant nine. And while there, she was in crews competing in dance battles across LA. The stories of which I assume is what the classic film series Step Up is based off, right? That makes total sense. What, not a classic film? Well, people around me are telling me those films aren't great films. Are you sure about that? But if anything's gonna give Channing Tatum his start, I gotta say it's okay in my books. I mean, they could have given the role to Kevin Federline. That wouldn't have been a good look. For a brief period of time at around the age of 14, well, Doja, she decided to try her hand at YouTube by posting makeup tutorial videos with the goal of becoming a makeup guru. Now, I couldn't find any of her old YouTube videos, but I did find this. When I was younger, I, I used to make YouTube videos when mm -hmm. I was like 13 and they were horrible. And she'd be like, what are you doing? Like, you can't be on the internet at <laughs> yeah, 13. Yeah, just uploading. Like, mm -hmm. You can't be on video at all. Now, I don't know how many Amala Delamis are out there, but seeing as this girl cited her as her twin, well, I'm assuming that video was made for her. And that video is from 2009. Now, as mentioned, her mom pretty quickly shut down her YouTube dreams, not trusting the YouTube space at the time. So she made her daughter remove all of her videos and who can blame her? I actually remember when YouTube, it was an embarrassing place to post content. No Doja, she didn't let this keep her down for long. She pretty quickly moved on to her next dream, making music full time. Now in the 11th grade, Doja, she dropped out of school so she could pursue this goal. Once out of school, when she wasn't hanging in trap houses, well, she otherwise lived a pretty low key lifestyle. She spent a lot of time alone in her room making music for a year straight. Now she would spend all day laying on a mattress on her floor using a computer with a built-in mic and she would record songs to GarageBand over instrumentals that she would stumble upon on YouTube. At this time, she came up with her artist moniker of Doja Cat because, well, I'll let her tell you. Despite her name being what she refers to as a high thought, well, Doja, she's actually been sober for over two years now. Don't I, smoke weed? I quit. I don't smoke weed. I don't smoke cigarettes. Uh, Good for you. I drink, but you know. Drink and watch porn. Yeah, I drink and I watch porn. Those are the two sinful things that I enjoy doing. Drinking and porn. Huh, I've actually quit one of those too. If you can guess which one, I owe you a follow. Now, even though she isn't smoking or doing drugs anymore, at least we still get Instagram live videos where she isn't afraid to express her love after having had a few drinks. Cause it was, you were literally humping his back. Yeah, I don't know what drives me to do that when I'm lit. Hmm. But I like backs or something, I guess. What were you Deep down drinking? subconsciously. What, what did you drink? I think I had probably tequila, probably like two or three shots of tequila and maybe like a mule or something mm -hmm. like that. Back in her bedroom while Doja, she got into the habit of making a song, posting it to SoundCloud, leaving it up for a week or so, only to then take it down after feeling insecure about how it turned out. Now eventually things, they began to click. In 2013, she released her debut single, So High, on the SoundCloud. And while it didn't blow up immediately, well, she did see it get a repost. And that was enough encouragement for her to leave it up there and not take it down. Slowly but surely, it began to bring her in a new audience. Now the song, it went from 12 views to 12,000, and now it has more than 5.2 million listens on the platform. Ever the diligent worker, well, Doja, she kept developing her sound and style while posting her music online and working local shows in LA. Growing her audience so high, it picked up enough steam to catch the ear of record label RCA Records, and the song found its way onto the Empire soundtrack when Doja was still just 18 years old. By 2014, Doja was signing a deal with RCA and releasing her debut album, Purr. You know, that's with three R's and an exclamation point. It's a brrrr, purr, I can't do it. After that release, Doja's buzz had began to die down a little bit. She fell back into the safe haven of making music alone in her room and was struggling to come up with a fresh new sound. 
Now it was around this time that her boyfriend at the time, well he bought her a surprise gift that would change her life forever. And no longer being with her, we all owe that guy a debt of gratitude because without him, who knows if the world ever would have got moo or juicy. Now there's no doubt that Doja's talent is the reason she is where she's at, but sometimes we all just need a little push. You know what I mean? Thanks to feeling reinvigorated in a musical sense, well Doja would hit on her first taste of mainstream success after dropping the viral hit video for Moo. Now sensing where the world was headed, well Doja knew that if she was able to combine a banging track with a memeable video, well she would have instant success on her hands. And boy did she ever do that. Now the inspiration for the song apparently came from the outfit she wears in the video. Now after she had brought it on tour with her and was trying it on for her fans via Instagram Live, well she had the epiphany that a whole song about wanting to be a cow, it could be a big hit. Sometimes it's easy confused genius with lunacy. It's a fine line, that's, that's really all I'm saying. Moo got co-signs from the likes of Chance the Rapper, Katy Perry and Chris Brown and the video is currently sitting on a whopping 68 million views on YouTube at the time of this recording. But of course, as soon as someone makes it big in this world, well there's a few hundred thousand of us looking to tear them down. Not me, but like people on the internet. With a goofy sense of humor like Doja's, well it was only a matter of time until cancel culture, they focused its wandering eye on her. I think that it's it's a lame culture. I think that, but there are there's good intent behind it. The only thing is, it gets out of hand because it's like you're there's people who, they in the same breath standing up for some people, also bring people mm -hmm, down mm -hmm. and 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 cause fear and anxiety, and that where it's not needed. I don't think that people need to be, to be bashed over the head a million times about something I think it's about talking about the issue and and educating people on the issue instead of trying to make them hate themselves mm -hmm. why is why is that the solution you know social justice warriors managed to locate some old tweets of hers from high school that used some offensive and homophobic language now most of us would probably have said something about how we were different people when we were younger you know less wise but Doja well she took another route she doubled down on her language, often using those same derogatory terms with her apology to the people she offended. So yeah, that just seemed to make things a whole lot worse. At the very least, as the years have moved on, well, it seems that she's learned from this experience. But now I understand it's not its not a good idea to be throwing stuff around. You don't say. <laughs> you don't, yeah. You don't say. Yeah. <laughs> now the internet may have tried to cancel Doja, but she just kept on kicking out new tunes and great music, like her hit song with Rico Nasty, Tia Tamara, and of course, Juicy. You should listen to Juicy. Juicy? Yeah. Juicy. Okay. Yeah. It's about butts. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> Both videos have fallen in line with Moo as viral hits. Now Tia Tamara has 41 million views and Juicy, it's got over 101 million views at the time of this recording. As for the rest of the story, well, I think I'm gonna wrap this one up here because this is before they are famous. My name is Mike McCredden and we make all sorts of celebrity bios here on this channel so if you're new to the channel be sure to subscribe. We've also hand selected another video for you to check out because if you like this one you're probably gonna enjoy that one as well. Let us know who's next in the comments down below and I'll see you guys in another video. Boom!